Good morning. Oh, it's like half four in the morning. We woke up at four to pack up for the camp trail. So we hired as we could, so we didn't wake anybody else up on the campsite. As we're heading off to the tour to the Horizontal Falls, I'm super excited because we have to uh, go on a seaplane, which has been on my bucket list for ages. We get to go on a seaplane, um, see some views, and then get to get on a speedboat through the Horizontal Falls. So, oh gosh, I hope it was worth getting up so early. Anyway, let's see how we do. So we're just standing in this queue in the hangar, waiting to board our flight. I've uh, been in this queue about 40 minutes. Quite hot in here as well. Um, they're refueling the planes and then hopefully we'll be on our way soon. Is it cosy enough for your shops? Is it cosy enough? We're on the plane at that. And, um, the reason we're in the same bed is we don't want to be this close. Oh, very close. <laughs> So we've landed and we're on the pontoon. Nice it's beautiful here, isn't it? Look at the colour of the water. Like this. Look at this. It's up for sharks and crocodiles. Okay, so we're on the pontoon now and uh, just been told to grab some tea and coffee and wait for a briefing of what we're doing next. Look, we should have sat down there, that looks nice, doesn't it? Anyway, they've got bathrooms up here, refreshments. Oh, big cobweb there. Whoa, look at that cobweb. Can't see the spider. Anyway, what's that over? Helicopter's just gone over. I think that some people do helicopter flights over here. Look at the view. So first things first, we're going to go swimming and see if we can see any sharks while we're down there. How's the water temperature down there, Dan? It's nice actually. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Yeah. It's pretty cold. Oh, cold. really? Oh, I thought it was nice. It's stinking hot this morning, so uh, I wish I could join you. <laughs> One of 
one of the uh, only downfalls of uh, one of the only downfalls of the And probably Table Beach as well. There are a lot of things in the water up here that want to kill you, unfortunately. We've got uh, plenty of nasty creatures. These guys here are not one of them. So these horny nurse sharks that you're seeing are probably the least of your worries. Even though they are a very docile species, they're like the puppy dogs of the ocean. Now, before I continue, would any of you guys down in the pool there like to have a go for throwing a bit of food in the water? Oh, yes. Yeah? yes, please. Yes. Awesome. Now, happy to touch a bit of raw slimy fish. Yeah. I'll give you that whole handful, mate. You can take one or two pieces and pass them along to anybody who wants to have a go. Just don't dangle your fingers right above their mouth. Just uh, Try and throw it right down in front of their mouth where they're going to feel that little vibration. So just, uh, yeah, take one or two, go one at a time and see how you go. Now, team, being blind and relying on vibrations, these sharks have a few mechanisms on how they can pick up on those vibrations. So you might have noticed, team, they've got some little feelers above their mouth. They look a bit like catfish, those two floppy little prongs that you can see. There we go. Nice shot. So those little prongs they've got above their mouth, folks, allow them to feel little movements in the water, as well as if they're lucky. But anything that they can suck out of a hole that's along a reef system or a sandbar or something like that is what these sharks are going to feed on. They've got all those rows of teeth which help them to grind up shells and oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. kilos of food per day individually to sustain themselves. We're allowed to put 1.8 kilos of food in the water per day across six shark shows. So we put in about 300 grams per show and then in between our shark shows these guys are off hunting for their own food again. So we do have a special license from uh, WA Parks and Wildlife which allows us to... We just swam with the sharks. Oh my god, it was so amazing. We were so close to them. We were like put our snorkels on and duck down and oh, frightening into their jaws. It was absolutely brilliant. Then we had some breakfast, which was really nice. And now we're just getting ready to go on our speedboat adventure.
horizontal pulled tour. And um, so when we arrived there, it was a little bit slow. They seemed to be a bit late getting things going. After that, everything was like a bit of a mad rush. But um, let me give you my opinion on it. I thought the swimming with sharks was absolutely brilliant. It was so much better than I thought it was going to be. In my mind, for some reason, I thought it was just like they had a tank of sharks and you just got in around them, but it wasn't. They were coming in from the wild and you were in like a swimming pool looking out or looking over. It was, it was so good. We were so close to them. I couldn't believe how close. <coughs> Sorry, I got really dry throat today. Um, so I really enjoyed that. Um, and then we did the boat tour and I was a little bit disappointed. I think the horizontal falls themselves are pretty spectacular, uh, you know, just to see how they're flowing. But, you know, it was kind of sold to us like it was an adrenaline filled boat ride. It wasn't very fast. And I did think we were going through both falls. I was a little bit disappointed, but I did, you know, it was, it was an experience and to see them was very good. And um, I'll put some footage up as well now of what we saw on the flight home. So we flew quite low and uh, we saw all the area and the archipelago, archipe I don't know, can't say it. So tired today. Um, but some beautiful scenery, so I shall put that up now. And we did see um, some whales and if the footage has come up, I'll, I'll show that too. But all in all, the, the trip cost is $1,100 each. So it's got about 570, 580 UK pounds. It's a bit steep, um, but I did get to go on a seaplane, which I've never done before, which I always wanted to do. Um, would I do it again? Probably not. Um, not for that price anyway, but definitely was an experience. And I know other people would have found the boat, you know, adrenaline fueled. That was my only thing. I think I watched videos on it and it's all been a bit hyped up for me, so it's a little bit disappointing in that part of it anyway. But anyway, it's all good fun. You know what, while we were there, um, we locked the keys in the van and the people we were hiring the van off came and took it away, checked our leisure batteries and <coughs> our front batteries and made sure everything was working fine because, as you know, last night at four o'clock, um, in the, no, sorry, last night it was about eight o'clock thing all our power went, our leisure battery just went dead, completely dead. Um, no warning or anything. And I mean, yes, we had been sat there for 24 hours, but you know, you expect it to last. Anyway, we think the problem was probably because the car battery had been faulty, we had it changed. Um, the faulty one had not been charging the leisure battery, but they've checked everything over. The car was back before we got off our tour, so we can get off and feel safe. That we're not going to run out of power again on either battery. Fingers crossed. So now we are off to Derby to look at the uh, prison tree. And that is on the way to the Gibb River Road. So in a few hours, we will be on the Gibb. And that will be the start of our Gibb River Road adventure. Come with us. So we are approaching Derby. And look at the landscape, look at all the termite mounds. And we're starting to see a few boab trees. Look at that. So we've got roadworks here. <clears throat> so I'm going to assume this is where the road was washed out last year. And they had the bad flooding, so this is the road they had to repair. So we have to go a bit slow on here because I think they're still working on it. But, oh, it's a lovely scenery, isn't it? It's ever changing, isn't it, while we've been going around? It makes it interesting. And look, these rivers have water in them. Oh gosh, it's warm. The air's warm. 39 degrees outside. I'll have to see if there's water in this one. Fitzroy River. Willow. 
their bridge. Is there water? Oh no, not in that one. Oh, maybe down there. Oh, there we go. Look at that. How spectacular is that? Oh, look at this cool bridge we're going over. That bit's a bit dry. We need some water so we can find some crocodiles for blue. So we just passed the junction of the Great Northern Highway that takes you to Fitzroy Crossing, which is the roadway to go around to Kadanara. And of course, we're going to go on the Gibb River Road. And um, trying to find a load of boab trees because we keep passing loads of them here. And I want to show you some of them when they're all together. That's typical, isn't it? We drive past them, I don't see them all together in that mass that I just did. So the Derby Boab tree, the prison tree. Hello. Yeah, good. Well, we learnt a bit about this history yesterday, but this was a bit, oh, it's massive. Gosh, even Blue said, wow. Are you doing the tree? Yes, that is the prison boab tree. And look, it's a site of significance. That's quite can you imagine that? Can you imagine being pr prison in there? Oh, I want to come and see this. I think it's important that you learn the history of places. And although we learnt some of this yesterday at the museum in Derby about how they treated Aborigines that they wanted to die for the pearls. It's uh, this kind of puts it puts it into perspective a bit, doesn't it? Apparently, there's a wasp nest around here, so Blue said not to go any further. It's got fruit on the tree up there. There's a wasp nest around the side. Where? The other side. Oh, around the other side. Yeah. Also look out for snakes on there. Can't see any. Remarkable, isn't it? Remarkable piece of history. Now we're off to the Gibb River Road. So we're now in Derby and we're just driving through. Have a quick look get some petrol before we get on the Gibb River Road. Look at all these bower trees. And we're in Derby. So look, you've got park spaces. Oh, look at that bower tree falling over. They've got park spaces for kids, which they always have. In Australia, they do. Uh, here's a petrol station. Is it this one? This one will do, won't it? Well, they're all going to be expensive. Well, they're all the same. Two forty-five. Well, that's still cheaper than we paid yesterday. Be a tourist way. Look at that, Gibb River Road. Mount Barnett. 
further down. What, on the Gibber Road? Yeah. Continue on Derby. Well, there's a town down there. No, it's a station. What, like a...? Like a station that we stayed on. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. What was the last station we stayed on? Babaroo. Oh, yeah, it's quite nice, isn't it? I've got the car. Oh, right, now we have to, right, pull over here. Pull over where? Here. Well, between these posts and the sign. What? Pull over here. Why? Because you've got to get a picture with the Gibber of the road, look! That's what it says. I don't fucking think so. <laughs> I think it is. So, we think this is May River Crossing Camp. This is where good people go to die. <laughs> it says Google that says this is where it is. Uh, um, um, I don't know. Uh, I think we'll try the next part. Oh, oh, don't fudge. <laughs> you don't like the look of this one? Oh, not really, do you? I don't know what it's like, because it's about three kilometres. This is it, eh? Yeah, it looks like this is it. We well, could go to Leonard's if you want. Well, I'm just looking around, like, what's going on? I can't see any cars or nothing. Can you see any cars? <laughs> Not yet, but it's uh, 2.7 kilometres. Oh. I don't know, what do you think? I'm easy either way. Well... I would put it in four-wheel drive, though. Oh, that'd be right for a minute. Uh, I don't know. Well, I think we should, I think we should carry on to Jones Rules. I'm not wasting the time here. I don't think anyone's come. There, there is tracks here, but they can be from ages ago, can they? I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, I don't even see any vehicles. We're still 1.2 uh, kilometres away. I thought we would have seen something. I don't see nothing. Are you sure this isn't like a dead one? One that people used to come to? We're still on wiki camps. Oh, God. Why are you going on wiki camp? Because that's where everybody goes on. We've not got a park for night. We're in Australia, Blue. Come on. Let's be positive. So. I'm being positive. OK. Somebody will be down here. <laughs> if not, it's going to be a lovely camp area. I ain't coming down here. There's a reason people aren't coming down here. We don't know what it is, but there's a reason. I feel. How far? Uh, nearly there. Well, yeah, there's nothing here, Zoe. You're not there yet. 400. There's nothing here. Oh, where is everybody? There is nobody. <laughs> <sighs> Hang on a minute, does it say? Which one? Fuck it. Well, yeah, it should be here. There is nobody. There's nobody. There's the camping spot at the end of a. It's not near. What you're saying when there's absolutely nobody? Well, the river's coming up, so... Let's turn around, yeah? We'll, we'll go up to... Just go round the corner to the river. I'll see if there's anyone there. <laughs> oh, there isn't, is there? There isn't no one here. I told you, I think this is a dead one. We picked a dead one. That's why these other people didn't stop, I don't think. There's no one here, is there? Nobody. This isn't a campground for nothing. It's <laughs> disgusting. Oh, it's nice. not. It's in the wilderness. It's nice. It's not one here. It's been nice. We're not stopping here then. Uh, no. Oh, what a shame. Can't stop here. So here we are at Leonard's River Rest Stop. How's that? 
nice and quiet. And our first night on the gib. Right. Needs crack on now before it gets dark. 